If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. I have joined a team up event. It looks like a regular World at War map with 100 players as you can see, except that here you are in two teams of 50 players, Team Red and Team Blue. For this map it's easier to play with the relations displayed. You can immediately see I am at war with half of the world. I am playing with Egypt, I am going to zoom out. Together with Libya, we already have taken care of South Sudan and also now Ethiopia is falling to our might. So everything is going great here on this front. I am going to use classical Blitzkrieg strategies. I have here already three light tanks and three motorized infantry. So I'm going to use those as shock troops. I've got a stack here with infantry and a bit of artillery which I still have in production and so I'm gonna use these as shock troops. I've also made a couple of naval bombers here to secure the Red Sea and I've got the other team, the red team, I've got them blocked out here in the Mediterranean with subs so the Suez Channel is blocked I've asked Libya here to block the Strait of Gibraltar, so the Mediterranean is secure for us. So far it's looking great. In Europe, Germany has fallen and Romania too. It looks like Poland will be next, Europe will be ours, no doubt about that. In Africa we have taken out already two countries, but more are still to fall. But there is active players here, so we're gonna have a big clash. A bit of a disappointment here in the Middle East as Turkey, Syria and Saudi Arabia haven't built any buildings and Iraq hasn't done a lot so far. Persia has gone for the AI and has been attacked by Pakistan and Turkestan in the process. I don't understand why players waste time attacking AI. Right here we had Mauritania attacking AI. I had to order him to send his troops south. Never ever waste time with AI because you give your enemy the time to grow stronger. Doesn't make any sense, just attack your enemy straight away. In regular games you can use your AI to build up your economy and to have a little bit of early on expansion. But if you have the opportunity to attack a player, always do, because with every player taken out on the map, your chance to win increases. We have a bit of a problem here, however, in South America, because there's only two players active. Only Venezuela and East Amazonas are playing, the others are not moving any troops. I don't know how many countries here are active, but I can see that at least Sao Paulo, East Brazil and Bolivia are active. So there's gonna be a problem here. But it's worst here in North America. Only New Mexico and Texas are active. Oh, I also see now California moving. So that's three players active, but that's it. I mean, this is pretty sad, right? Why join a map if you're not gonna play it? Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six nations that are not playing in North America. I don't know how you're gonna keep resisting here, but at least we're gonna take Europe, we're gonna take Africa. Also in Asia, all is going well. We're expanding like everywhere. You can see here all the lines what territory we have taken it is looking very good i think we're gonna take easily asia europe and africa with a bit of difficulty but we're gonna take it and in oceania not a lot is happening you can see all units are still there on the starting positions so far only here new zealand seems to be active and also he is wasting time on attacking ai some players just are very afraid to attack players. I mean, why join a war game if you're afraid to attack other players, right? Go play some city. I mean, what the heck? Day change has come. We are now day three. Let's look in the newspaper what team is winning. And it is blue team that is winning with 610 points. 610 points is a lot. That means that 12 players have been taken out. That is great. That is very good news. I'm gonna zoom in into my territory as Tanyanika 
is marching in right here with 10 infantry units. He's gonna collide with my stack of 10 infantry units and I've left my anti-air in there as well. They're gonna add a little bit of health, which is good because the damage will be spread, the infantry will fight, they will defend. And as infantry is better in defense than in offense, I'm gonna win the fight easily. There are two artillery here too, they're not gonna make a big difference, but they're gonna add a little bit of damage and all small things help. Otherwise, everything is going great. You can see all my allies, except Algeria, who is inactive, are sending all their units south. So this is gonna be over very fast in Africa, I suppose. Also here now, you can see that Congo is in a bad position. Same counts for Angola. These two countries, they're going to fall soon. We have Tanhanika here, who is trying to help out a bit. Also, Tanyanika is going to get invaded by me soon enough because when these shock troops here are getting loose, it's gonna be hard to stop them. And with those 10 units that are going to be gone, it's gonna be very easy to invade Tanyanika and to finish them off. Two hours have passed and as you can see, the fight is almost over. His tech has been reduced to only six units with very low health, only four infantry and two anti-air are left. So this stack will be gone in the next attack or the one after that. We are one hour and a half away from day change with day five. As you can see... Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, I'm building a massive fishbowl. Africa has almost been conquered. There has been barely any battle apart from the small skirmishes like here. Ben Chuoland is trying to take his units out to sea to reinforce his troops in Asia. He has migrated to Asia here as he understood that Africa would fall. He wanted to send his army elsewhere where he could do more damage. Also Europe here has been cleaned up nicely. It has almost fallen. Same situation still in the Middle East. Those players are inactive, nothing much is happening. The red team is also getting their ass kicked in Asia, apart from some small exceptions. We are losing in both North and South America due to a lack of active players. It is plain to see how inactive some players are and how bad that just the regular Call of War player is actually when I show you here, the troops here of North Sudan are heavily damaged. There are six enemy units here. It's the second time that Sudan is gonna walk in there and lose his army. He doesn't even notice because he's not online. He logs in once a day, makes exclusively infantry. It is just so stupid. I mean, I barely had resistance here in Africa. I haven't seen anybody using any artillery or any air force. I mean, what the heck? If you join a game, put in some online time and you're gonna be much better off. Also here, you can see this player barely active, put all his 18 units in the same stack, left his course wide open for a counter attack, which is exactly what is happening. He's barely active, moves around a little bit, but that's it. We've got the same with the enemy team. Those 14 units have been bombarded for the last 24 hours with cruisers. He comes online sometimes, but not enough to do anything. I'm gonna be happy in one hour and a half, because when it's day change, then all these bots here, they're gonna become active. And as we have way more countries, all of our bots, they're gonna start attacking the enemy team. Of course, we would have a small problem here, but I've prepared myself. There are submarines here. There is a wall of submarines here. I've got a couple of naval bombers right here, ready to attack. So all is well here. I am prepared. As soon as Africa has fallen, the Western African countries, they will invade South America. I'm gonna invade the Middle East. You can see already Libya is sending units over here, preparing an invasion of the Middle East. So soon the Middle East will fall. South America will be reinforced. European countries, they will move to America. 
and the Russian countries here, they will move eastwards towards Asia. So I think this game is going to be wrapped up very, very fast. This is also why I haven't invested a lot in economy, just a little bit for the necessity. I've almost got in the resource provinces that I need the most to level two industry and I'm making my first two recruitment offices as I don't have a lot of manpower and one medium tank costs 1,500 manpower for access. That is a lot, so a little bit of manpower will always be welcome.